Welcome to our tutorial about setting up your project. In this lesson, we're going to learn about the important parameters managed from the project setup window. You need to set up your project before you start recording. Now, while you might not need to adjust many parameters in this window, it's a good idea to get these settings straight from the get go. For example, let's say you need to record in 24 bit format but forgot to set it up that way. Now you've done your recording in 16-bit format and there's no way to go back and fix it. To access the Project Setup window, go to Projects on the main Cubase menu strip and select Project Setup. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Shift-S. The Project Setup window opens and it's got four groups of settings. The start and length of the project, the frame rate when working with video underneath, the display format and its display offset value in time or bars, and down at the bottom a variety of digital audio properties. In this lesson we'll learn what each of these options mean. Let's leave the start field at its default setting unless you need the project to start at a different time location. If that's the case, enter the appropriate value in hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. And now let's take a look at the length field underneath. Set the length to the approximate length of your project, giving a little bit of extra time. Setting up the length appropriately influences the proportion of time displayed in the main project window and basically speeds up any freezing or rendering processes. If you don't expect your song to be longer than five minutes, just enter five minutes here. If your voiceover is no longer than 30 minutes, enter that here. Click or double click on the length field and then type in your changes. Press enter to accept. If you're working with a video file or synchronizing to an external timecode provided by a video tape, set the frame rate field to the video's frame rate. Cubase offers you some preset selections. In the Display Format field, you can select how you want time to display on the transport control bar. The top two options we're familiar with from our work with the Project Ruler. Bars and Beats shows your project divided into bars and beats, and Seconds will give you standard minutes and seconds. You'll recall that the Transport panel tells us what our primary time display format is. It's bars and beats, while our ruler is displaying in seconds. Let's go back to the Project Setup window. We're not stuck to whatever display format we select here. We can easily change this within the project without having to return to this window. Display Offset. This can be left at its default value of zero in most cases. You need to set this up if you're synchronizing your project to external video that starts at a frame other than zero. For example, let's say you're syncing with a video that starts at three minutes, 59 seconds but you still want your project's timeline display to start at zero, you'd enter three minutes, 59 seconds as your offset value here. You're also able to enter the value in bars and beats if that's how you prefer to view your work. In the last control area, we set the sample rate, record format, file type, and pan law. Let's talk about the sample rate first. Standard CD quality sample rate is 44.1 kHz per second. There are many occasions when you'd need more than this. For example, let's say you're doing a soundtrack for a DVD format. Once you've set a sample rate, you won't be able to change it later because all sounds have to be at this sample rate. So be sure to make your settings before you do any recordings. In the record format field, we set the appropriate bit depth for the recording. Cubase 5 supports 16, 24, and 32 floating point bit depths. You can select any resolution supported by your audio hardware. CD quality is 16 bit, but you may want to record at a 24 bit depth to give you some more headroom while you're mixing and mastering. The larger the bit depth, the larger your files, so keep that in mind too. 
Another thing to keep in mind is that while you're able to import files of a different bit depth, all files recorded in this project will have the bit depth that you select here. For more information about how the sample rate works and the bit depth, please see my course on Recording, Mixing, and Mastering Audio, where I cover this in great technical detail. The Record File Type drop-down menu. This gives us a few choices. Let me just quickly explain what they are. A regular wave file is what you hear on a CD. A broadcast wave is just like a standard wave file, except that it embeds text strings in the audio files, such as your name and audio time stamping. By using this file type, you don't have to enter this information later on because it's done automatically for you. AIFF stands for Audio Interchange File Format, and that's a Macintosh native format. Wave 64, that's a proprietary Sony file format that supports files larger than 2 gigabytes. This type of file is better suited, for example, to live concert recordings in surround sound format, whose file sizes can get pretty big. Be warned that many CD players only play regular WAV files, so you may want to stick with this. Stereo Pan Law. This pop-up menu allows you to select one of four pan modes, and this is all related to the fact that, without compensation, the power of the sum of the left and right side is higher or louder if a channel is panned to the center than if it's panned to the left or right. And that's what happens if you select zero decibels from this menu. If you've got two similar signals panned to the center, like two vocals, what's going to happen is that they'll sound doubly loud. To fix this, you have pan laws. They can lower signals panned to the center by a certain decibel level that you specify. Minus six, minus three decibels. If you choose the zero decibel option, you turn off the constant power panning. If you select equal power, that's what's selected by default, the power of the signal remains the same regardless of the pan setting. You may want to experiment to see which fits better in a given situation. If this seems confusing, just leave this at equal power. And when you're done making your changes, click OK. The project setup dialog window closes. And this concludes our lesson on how to set up your project.